My research is on what we call the early origins of children's type 1 diabetes. We want to find out what those things could be and, and importantly, what ones can we change. And for this purpose, about 10 years ago, we set up the India study, which is a study of 1,500 Australian children, following them from pregnancy till they're 10 years of age, looking at what could be driving their risk of getting type 1 diabetes. We are the first and largest study in the world. My current research focus is to try to unravel the genetics that are embedded in type 1 diabetes so that we can better understand how disease might be progressed and then prevent it. As a young scientist, I started research just when molecular biology was born as a concept and I was very excited about the power it would bring to understand how cells work and what goes wrong with them. Having also worked a bit in the biotech sector, I felt that it's very important to translate this kind of knowledge into prevention, treatment and cure. And that really drew me to type 1 diabetes. Now working in the Women's and Children's Hospital alongside clinician colleagues, the opportunity to apply this to a living disease and develop new therapies is really what motivates me every day. I met a patient when I was a very junior doctor who came in at the age of 18 with end-stage kidney failure from type 1 diabetes. And I'd never seen that before. At such a young person to have diabetes so badly that, uh, that it destroyed their kidneys. I've had an interest in type 1 diabetes really ever since then. So our current research focus is the development of alternative sites for islet cell transplantation outside of the liver. My hope for the future is that more patients with type 1 diabetes will get access to islet cell transplants so that they'll be able to make insulin for themselves again. The impact of JDRF on my research has been huge. Over the last sort of 30 years, with the connection with them, they really put the person with type 1 diabetes first in everything they do. I've been extremely fortunate to be almost continuously funded by JDRF since 2006. Extraordinary length of time. One of the most inspiring things about working with the JDRF is their acceptance of high-risk projects that try really bold new things. With JDRF funding, I'm now trying something that conventional funding would not support. That is a big leap towards the solution we seek. I think support of any research is, is just of the highest philanthropy, isn't it? Because it's an enormous act of confidence and trust that we really take very seriously indeed. So to people who support and fund JDRF, I'd like to say thank you. You're enabling the kind of high-risk research which is innovative and which actually can get to these cures and treatments that we desperately need. Without your funding, it's just not possible. <laughs>